First game, uh, I just got done with my report of the first game. I am so proud of Eric Manoa. If, if you knew how far he's come in his maturity, he's always had stuff, that's why he signed, but his maturity level, uh, or lack of, I should say, to see what he did today, the way he competed uh, on every pitch, and then went near the backstop to take a, to catch a pop-up that Sanchez had misplayed in the wind. Um, I, was, I was just very proud of him. And because of team things, his innings have been cut short the last two starts. And today, we were going to give him the ball regardless. And uh, he went right to his pitch limit, gave us <clears throat> six great innings. And uh, Regnault, who's now leaving us for Binghamton, by the way, um, came in and got the save. So the pitching in game one was terrific. Um, it was nice the way that, uh, I mean, their, their starter, um, my gosh, he pitched fantastic. I was glad he was on an innings limit because when he got out, we were able to punch a couple runs across. And obviously a big double by Paez. Uh, Sean Ratliff has been very happy because um, Paez, in his college program, they were a feast or famine. They led the nation in home runs, but they also led in strikeouts. And as you guys are probably seeing, he, for a little guy, he's hitting way too many balls in the air. And he's really working hard at changing his swing. With Rat, they're spending countless time in the cage, and when he got that line double in the left field corner, that made Rat happy. Um, the wild pitch, and uh, Woodman C with the bat, obviously was the star of game one. And, and, and it was so good for all of our guys to see what, what, what Rat has been preaching. Woodman C was one and two, and fouled off a bastard slider, but you know fought off a bastard pitch, and then got a better one, and drove it deep enough to center to tie up the game. And then the same scenario in the ninth, um, you know, Cone getting the base hit, the good sack bunt by Paez, and once again, Woodman C with two strikes fouled off a bastard pitch, and then they made a mistake and he drove it off the wall that turned out to be the game winner. So, I mean, real, real good at bats. Um, and our defense continues to play well. And then in the second game, we had a, uh, as I found out when I got to the park, <coughs> um, Jacobson is going up to Columbia. And so normally that would have been Giannis's start, but Jacobson, they, the organization needed him to go five innings today. Apparently somebody's gonna move up from Columbia, he's, he, he's gonna start. So that's why we did a last minute switch with Jacobson going five and you know coming out with a one nothing lead. In fairness to Giannis, he's not used to closing games. He's been a starter his whole career, but he came in, gave us a great sixth, and in the seventh, uh, Bridges, he made, uh, he made a great pitch, a too good a pitch on Bridges, and he hit the little flare that, uh, that got the rally started in the ninth, in the seventh. And then Robinson, who I think is their best player, um, certainly, uh, I mean, we made one mistake. And the honest was really hanging his head in the dugout. He felt like he had let us down. And I said, hey, you made one mistake and a good hitter jumped on it. That's, that's baseball. You got to give him credit. Um, and down to our last out, uh, Nick Sergakis gave us a, a big base hit and uh, a wild pitch. And then, uh, you know, just, you know, I'm not sure what happened. Their, their shortstop played very well, but, but that ball got away from them and we were able to steal a run with two outs in the ninth and, and then punch the winning across, run across. I'm real happy for Pete Alonzo that, uh, you know, that we put them in a bind. They had to either walk Alonzo to load the bases or pitch to him. Um, you're in the hopes that a big guy like that, you can maybe strike him out. I think their thinking was, and then walk to Barry, the left-hander, to get deeper in the lineup. Unfortunately for us, it panned out because you know Pete, Pete drove the ball, and so it was good. It was good to get uh, back to 500. You know, I was going to say, better. I was looking at my question: How does it feel to be at 500 <coughs> at yeah. mid-season? Yeah, and I think we won whatever we won, four of five or five of six, whatever it is. We played been playing very well of late. Um, pitching and defense, and better hitting, better at bats. So that's all I got. And whatever questions you got, let's. I'd like to um, ask you. This is one of the rare instances. Okay. Go ahead. This is one of the rare instances that you have. Um, he's a ball player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that you have uh, draft picks two to five starting in your infield, and um, I'd like you to comment briefly on each of the, their performances thus far? Um, yeah, I recommended all of them to go to Instructional League today. Um, 
I mean, Alonzo has, somebody asked me the other day, when's the last time that you managed somebody with his kind of power? And in 2005, when I was with the Angels, I had Mike Napoli, who hit 37 bombs to lead the Texas League in home runs. And Alonzo is like Napoli, that they have out of the stadium type, but not just over the fence. I mean, Pete's first home run was uh, fooled on a changeup, and he literally hit it one-handed. Um, and then, of course, he hit one um, at Hudson Valley. They tell me in the history of the park there had only been one ball to dead center. It would be like hitting a ball over this batting eye. And when it left the bat, it was no doubt it was going in the trees 100 feet over the fence. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's Mike Napoli out of the stadium type power from pole to pole. You know, so that that's a great, and that's why he was drafted in the second round. He's a potential impact bat for the Mets because, <clears throat> you know, in the big leagues, if you get down early, you if your team is balanced, you need to have somebody like Cespedes, like Duda when he's healthy, that can hit a three-run homer to get your team back in the game. And certainly Alonzo provides that, and he's got a great makeup. And uh, Paez, um, it, it's, it's going to be a learning curve because he's never it, – it's surprising for his size. You'd think that he would have played second base. He's been a shortstop every inning of his whole life until he played second when he signed. And so he's – He's making adjustments. He's had some problems, but tonight he made a couple of fantastic plays. Uh, the first game on a slow hit ball on the dead run, early in the second game, rounding a ball toward the second base bag and getting his body in position to make us, uh, with a shortstop's arm, make, getting a throw. And then in the seventh or eighth inning, the diving play in the four hole was, uh, that's a phenomenal play on turf which shows his quickness and his, his ability from his back to throw the guy out. So um, we're very excited about him, and he's also a shortstop. Just so happens that we've got Colby Woodmansey, who to me, the last player I managed like him would be when Travis Fryman was about the same age. They're both built alike. Their skill set is very similar. I'm hoping that Woody will get on a weight program and put on a few pounds and get stronger because he certainly got the possibility of having power like Fryman did if he had some strength to his frame. Um, but I think he's only made one error the whole I mean, he's played brilliant at shortstop and can make all the plays. Um, and then you go to Tiberi at third who got off to a very rough start with the bat. But to his credit, and every scout likes to see a guy when he's not going good because then you find out something about his personality. And Tiberi started off hitting like 050, 5 for 50, but made every play at third base. He never let his lack of offense affect the defense. And we kept telling him, you're going to get your at-bats. And now he's slowly coming out of it, you know, up to 240. And I love the way he ran out that ball in the second game. Routine play to shortstop. But his hustle caused a throwing error and they weren't able to tag him, and that that got us on the board. That got the run. I think a lot that gets lost, but that never does by managers or coaches, because you preach. That's why you run out every ball. So um, yeah, and then and then you can't overlook the next guy in that thing. I think he was a 23rd round pick or whatever. But Sergeikis is having a real big season for us, and you know we pick our spots to rest those other three so Sergeikis can get in there. Um, because he keeps coming up with big base hits, he's stolen, he's eight for eight in bags, and um, so he's a he's a nice addition too. Play, plays higher than a twenty third yeah. rounder. Yeah. yeah.